What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, doing a commentary. All right, so we got Card Goodman, seventeen thirty-one, and Cap Master Zero, sixteen sixty-one. Uh, okay, so about seventy points between them. Um, Cap Master won game one. I, I don't know what he's playing. All I saw was he had a ton of uh, fucking exceeds. I think he had Volcasaurus, so maybe something rank five ish, you know. Alright, so Card Goodman opens up with um, Mermel Bistius. He discarded Lindy. Um, huh, what do you usually get if you discard a Lindy? I mean, usually people get Pike, but your opponent doesn't have a field, and Pike is like best serve when your opponent has a field. Unless you have Dragoons, then Pike is just the nuts. So, <clears throat> I wonder what he's going to get. And, they're, I guess they're just doing a little chatting in the. Uh, the chat box and people, I mean, uh, I guess Card Goodman is still deciding on what he wants to get. I would say, like, uh, Pike seems like the, the most logical choice, but it's like, usually people discard, you know, like, Marksman with Pike, so, okay, he's going to summon the Pike, unless he, or, see, he used Heavy Infantry, but obviously he can't trigger it, so it's not like he's making, he's not making the huge advantage that he could, you know what I mean, like, He'll still have six cards, and that's great, but he's not getting, like, the home runs he's looking for. All right, so that gets him Undyne, which is, you know, like, I guess the plus two, so. He sets one in his back row, two in his back row, and then he passes the cat. All right, so Catmaster, what are you playing? All I know is he OTK'd him game one, or if not an OTK, close. Okay, so he dualities. Oh, I think he's playing Reckless Frogs. I thought that's what he might be playing. Yep, he's playing Reckless Frog OTK. This is a deck that um, Mazik made infamous <laughs> on Dueling Network for real. <laughs> All right, so he takes Breakthrough Skill. He puts back the Infernal Reckless and the Duke Frog. Um, I want to get Mazik dueling again. His matches are legendary, and I think he's in the 1900s right now. All right, so... Huh. He summons Mother Grizzly. Oh, okay. I guess he doesn't want it to get. Oh, uh, I get it. He doesn't want it to get popped by. Um, he doesn't want it to get popped if he has a marksman in hand. And since he already used one heavy infantry, I guess he's like, what's the odds of him having two heavy infantry? You know what I mean? So it looks like uh, Catmaster is going to try and enter his end phase. He, he's he's obviously asking Card Goodman if he's going to use a Sphere or something like that. All right. So he he just goes to the end phase and. That's that. Down comes Genix Undyne. Torrential wouldn't be bad here. It wouldn't be bad. Although maybe you want to save Torrential. I don't know. Cause I mean he's got he got what Lindy and no. I would wait for him to dump first. Maybe he dumps Title and he move he tries to summon Title with uh, the Lindy and the Heavy Infantry as in his graveyard and then Torrential him. That'd be even better. You know what I mean? It's crazy that. Reckless Frogs run Duality, despite the fact that <laughs> they run Reckless Inferno, uh, Reckless Inferno Summon, they run uh, Ronin Toten, so it's like, obviously when they do Special Summon, they're going ham, but you know, they don't have to Special Summon. A lot of times, Mother Grizzly, like 50%, it Special Summons during your opponent's turn, same thing with Fire and Ice Hand, so <clears throat> it's interesting to see that they still run uh, pod duality. Okay, so he does dump the title in the graveyard. Um, he has to also add a Genix controller. Whoa, you didn't add a controller. Uh, okay. Accepted game state, I guess. I would have asked him to add a controller because what if he what if he doesn't have controller? Okay, so I guess he's adding controller in that. Like, dude, you know, already something title. Now you're gonna add control. Like the fuck. <laughs> Okay, so I, I, all right, whatever. It's, it's the same deal. So yeah, I was thinking he'd probably try and go for title just so that he can get Gaios out. All right, he goes for Dracosat, which I would have much rather preferred Gaios, honestly. <coughs> all right, so it looks like um, Catmaster is going to respond. Now he has breakthrough skill, so all right. So he says that's fine. And he'll probably wait for Dracosac to try and activate his effect, and then he'll use Breakthrough Skill on that. Okay, so he's gonna use he's gonna use um he's gonna use the effect on I guess Breakthrough Skill if that is Breakthrough Skill. 
And I would imagine we're going to see some more special summons. He chains breakthrough skill on Pike. And then Card Goodman soul charges everything back. Or at least two cards. The Gaios and, or excuse me, the Title and the Teus and the Draco Sack. Okay. And he's going to big eyes monster. That sucks. This was all an ends to or, or all an ends to a mean. Wait, did I say that right? All a means to an end. There we go. <laughs> it was all a means to an end. Get rid of those back rows so that I can big eye your shit. Then make Muhammad Shark. And then um, Bahamut Shark can get me uh, Trite, I think. Yep. So they can get me Trite. And now it looks like kind of the reverse of game one. It looks like uh, Card Goodman is setting up for the OTK next turn. He detaches as a cost to get Trite on board. And <coughs> Card, Go uh, Card Goodman is saying seems familiar. I guess, again, he's he's indicating that pretty much this happened to, um, to, to Catmaster. Or Catmaster did this to him in game one. So it's going to be really, really difficult to come back from this. I'm not quite sure I see it happening. Uh, especially if you keep duality. He dualities for Ronin Toten, Flying C, which came way too late, <laughs> and Sea Lancer that he can't even summon. So I guess Ronin Toten by default. We might be seeing a scoop phase here, realistically. I, I don't see any of those cards saving him. Uh, especially if Bahamut Shark can activate his effect again. I don't know if people play two cards for Bahamut Shark to actually trigger. You know what I mean? Because you could you could just use... Uh, well, he can't even use his big eyes. His field is, like, locked up. But, um, I mean, you can launch the Draco Sack, though. You can just launch the Draco Sack at... Like, if your opponent hits a back row, you can launch the Draco Sack at, uh, at their back row. And then big eye their monster. And if they don't play a monster, obviously... Um, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm pretty sure this is over 8k on board. This, this, and this, I mean, that's like, what, 7,800 right there? <laughs> Without even the Undyne or the Trite? So, well, I guess if you launch the monster, then, yeah, he'll have to either attack or... I, I would just attack. I'd attack, well, I mean, all you guys are 26. You're three big guys, so I guess it doesn't matter which one attacks. <clears throat> Although, no, yeah, I guess it does kind of matter. I would attack with Bahamut Shark second, just so that I could potentially be still use, like, Big Eye's effect if this would die or something like that, or Draco's effect. I mean, it'd be crazy if this shit was, like, Fossil Dina. All right, so he's not even going to risk it. Draco Sack is going to launch itself. It's Duke Frog. Unfortunately, um, I don't know if Duke Frog can save him here. Sure, it can replace itself. So, that's technically a plus. It's just, will he actually live to play the Duke Frog? And down comes Genix Controller, which we already knew he had. And everybody's just going to attack. Maybe he has, um, Battle Fader? I mean, this deck doesn't traditionally run Battle Fader. You know what I mean? Um, if you had Gores, that would be no good. Because he would Synchro use... Okay, he does have Gores. <laughs> Alright. So he attacked with um, Controller, or excuse me, with Undyne. Um, he's going to big eye your Gores, pretty sure. And actually, what? No, nah, I don't. I'm not sure if he has any Mermels in the graveyard. Because I'm thinking, um, yeah, you know what? I think that if he big eyes the Gores, he can. Uh, what's it called? No, that doesn't. He still has too many monsters on board. I was thinking, obviously, you can um, ram. Like this motherfucker into it, or you can you can sink. No, no, no. Okay, okay. I'm 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 psyching myself out. You can synchro these two in the black rows, then big eye it, and then exceed for another level seven. Although another rank seven. Although I'm not sure if he has anything left to make. And it looks like he okay. So instead of uh, synchroing, he's just gonna exceed and then big eye it. That works also. Then he sets another card in his back row, and. I guess Card Goodman's gonna pass back to Catmaster. He didn't have the Fossil Dino we were looking for. It didn't even matter. He threw Draco Sack at it anyway. Okay, so Rodent Toten is pitched for Swap Frog. That gets Blackhorn because that is an inherent special summon. 
and Swap Frog dies. I don't think that what's it called? I don't think that Infernal Reckless Frogs play. I don't think that they play. Um, I don't think that they actually play Soul Charge, or at least I'm not sure that I've seen it played in the deck. All right, so Ronan Tony comes out. Maybe he's gonna go Infernal Reckless Summon. I mean, otherwise, why not just scoop it up? Why even? Why even? Uh, summon the um the Rodent Totem. Has not committed his normal summon yet. That is very important. I mean, if, if all of these cards are perfect, he could actually run this shit back. Just, just know that this deck does have the potential to do it. You know what I mean? Especially if he's playing was it Des Croak King, the shit that just torches your entire field. You know what I mean? Like that card is real. Okay, I guess he's not. Um, at least he knows that his opponent can't summon anything else. <laughs> That's good, right? He just has to attack with everything. Uh, the Rodent Odin will definitely die. That can die to this, this, or this. But whatever this is, who knows? I mean, again, if it's Fossil Dina, and this deck, this deck does side Fossil Dina. At least Magic, Magic version does. I've seen, I've seen him play Fossil Dina before. That shit is raw as fuck. When somebody actually attacks into it. Okay, so Bahamut Shark attacks, Rodent Toten. Wait, what was the point of summoning Rodent Toten if you were going to die anyway? Like, what was the point? Okay, so it's Mother Grizzly. And he still needs to survive a lot of attacks. Okay, Mother Grizzly is Mother Grizzly. And I think that's the, yeah, that's the third Mother Grizzly. So he can't get any more Mother Grizzlies. Somebody's gonna have to attack this bitch. Engineer attacks it. He can live this turn because of those mother grizzlies. Those mother grizzlies basically absorbed a lot of damage that he would have took straight to the face. And this is a a lot of water monsters being played here. Okay, so he gets dupe frog. Man, that sucks. Basically, it's basically like taking a direct attack from course. <laughs> he still has to eat twenty six, right? And then I think trade is the last one that didn't attack. Alright, so yeah, um Duke Frog dies. He's looking from his or he's looking at his deck. Obviously he doesn't want to get something back from the graveyard because he can just get Swap Frog to his deck and still have Swap Frog in his graveyard to banish it for Ronin Totem's effect. Then here comes Trite. Trite gets it in too. She's going to attack for sixteen. And Card Goodman just passes. The back row are, are what would be what concerns me the most. You know what I mean? I, I would be more concerned about the back row than anything. <clears throat> All right, so Catmaster, normal summon Swap Frog. There's his normal. It's gonna activate the effect. Okay. It gets booked. So it's still gonna get the effect. Um, it's just he won't be able to use it anymore this turn. He obviously won't be able to, you know, uh, return it to his end special. Okay, so Catmaster scoops it up. Uh, <laughs> thank you. He put himself out of his own misery. All right, so we're going into game three. I'm thinking, well, Mermo, obviously the Black Horn, I mean, that, that just put in, that worked wonders because it stopped, it was stopping Swap Frog. Well, it stopped the initial Swap Frog. If he would have normal summoned it, he'd have been okay, but... You know, he went for the special summon. Unfortunately, that sucked. Um, I anticipate both players are going to be running Maxi. We already see that Catmaster had the um, he had the the black shiny C ready for uh, Xyz, but he drew it like way too late. Well, he dualityed into it way too late. Um, I think those are probably going to be the best two. Um, Card Goodman is probably going to side Needle Ceiling. I don't think that he main decks that. I, he said something about that. So, like, I, I, I can't see Mermill main decking Needle Ceiling. It just seems counterproductive to me. I mean, the only true floater that they really have is Lindy. Well, no, I'm going to count Title as a floater, too. Because you can just summon him infinitely if you have a good graveyard. And I guess I'll count Undying as a tuner, or as a floater because he pays for himself with a controller. So, you know what? I guess they have a decent amount of uh, floaters. Alright. So, Catmaster's going first. And Debunk is actually good against both decks. Because Debunk can uh, shut off Rodent Totem. And it can shut off pretty much everything in Mermill. 
like the hand effects, the graveyard effects, a lot of shit. All right, so we see the normal summon a swap fog. It's going to activate its effect. And what are you going to dump? Rodin Totem's a good dump. Um, I'm just going to guess Rodin Totem. That seems like the most logical, especially for turn one. Okay, Tadpole. That was the only other card that I was thinking. Tadpole sets up for your um, your Death Frog plays. Especially if you can get uh, two Tadpole in the, in, the, in the game. Or two Tadpole in the graveyard early. Okay, so Catmaster is going to use his... Um, his extra normal summon effect, and he's gonna put Duke Frog in uh, attack mode. So Duke Frog is kind of sitting out there on a little island, uh, 100 attack. It does mean he'll eat some damage. Um, hopefully, he doesn't get like LTK or whatever. So, Card Goodman drew his card and. I don't know, with, with six cards, man, like, Teus is always a threat. As long as you have pretty much any other water monster, that guy's alive. So, I mean, we could see Card Goodman start off with the obligatory Genix Undyne, which I would imagine would dump Dragoons in this situation. Because you can already get over this guy. You don't have to worry about that. So it's not like you have to use Heavy Infantry or whatever. Okay, so he opens up with Pike, discarding what? Okay. Oh, okay, so he does burn a heavy infantry. I guess he figured he had it. Why not use it? You know what I mean? Get the extra 100 damage. <laughs> All right, so he has Genix Undyne, which pretty much got him rolling last game. Duke Frog dies. And he's going to trigger that effect. He'll probably add another copy of Swap Frog. Nope, he has Death Frog. Okay, fair enough. And, alright, he's going to attack for 1600. Open field. I mean, if I had, now personally, if I had Gores, I'd drop that motherfucker so fast. <laughs> because what I would want to do is I'd want to simplify the game to the, to the point where I don't technically have to OTK you. I can just, like, kill you with a Volcasaurus Gaia play. And I felt like if you had Gores, Gores would run over that. The token would get it in too. It'd just be huge damage on board. You know what I mean? Alright, so Rodent Totem is discarded for Swap Frog. And now I think he's trying to load up his graveyard. Catmaster doesn't have the Black Horn this time, or at least he's not going to use it right now. He's going to activate Swap Frog's ability. Oh, okay. Maybe not. He's going to activate Infernal Reckless Summon. The crazy thing is, he actually gets the special summon. Um, two more copies. Oh, never mind. Sorry. 1,500 or less. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's 1,500 or less, the monster that's targeted. Um, yeah, he actually gets to summon uh, two more copies of, of Pike, if I'm not mistaken. Let me read this right quick. I'm pretty sure. Do, 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 do. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, and I guess they would be able to trigger as well. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure how that would work. If they would be able to, like, if all the pikes could trigger, <laughs> uh, maybe one could. I, I'm. I'm not even gonna speculate on what would actually happen. All right. So it looks like he's going to chain Infernal Reckless Summon. Now he's still gonna actually get that swap for all the effect. By the way, Curtis Goodman is thinking of responding again. He could easily just play like Vanny's Emptiness, or he could be like, um, I'm going to activate Solemn Warning on that, and then everything would become, like, all of the speculating would become just a moot point, because none of it would actually even matter. And I guess, you know what I mean? Uh, actually, he could chain, he could actually change the target by, um, he could actually change the target by activating something like Abyss Spear, and then bringing out Lindy. Okay, so he's going to book a moon it. <clears throat> and that's unfortunate because um, his opponent still does get the, the pikes. I don't.
thing. That's what I was thinking. All right, I guess it misses Tiny. Oh, you know what? I guess the last thing to happen is swap dumping to the graveyard. I'm not sure that any of that's gonna matter. Um, I'm not sure that any of that is actually gonna matter because the biggest problem right now is the fact that he has all these monsters on board, all these fucking pikes that he has to kind of get through. <laughs> So, he still gets the dump effect, obviously. Infernal Reckless uh, Summon hits the Graveyard. And he does get the extra Normal Summon. And that's what it looks like he's going to use. He's going to use Death Frog. He's going to activate the effect. Card Goodman says, you got it. Okay, out comes a second Death Frog. Now, I'm kind of surprised. Here's what I'm kind of surprised. I'm kind of surprised that um, that Catmaster didn't, what's it called, that he didn't add another frog when his dupe frog died and then special summon rodents on him and then infernal summon that. You know what I mean? Because when you infernal summon a rodent on him, you actually get to, uh, you get to, what's it called? Um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? You get to get... Uh, more co you get to get two copies of Death Frog out anyway, you know what I mean? And that way he wouldn't have had to burn his normal summon on the Death Frog itself. Okay, so now he brings out that Gusto Phoenix and Gaia Dragon. Alright, we could be seeing some big damage here. He's gonna enter battle phase. So okay, yep. Um, one is gonna guy. One is gonna die. The guy dragon. He's gonna eat a ton of damage from that, by the way. And then he's gonna take a direct shot to the face from Digusto Phoenix, and he loses both pikes. So clearly, um, him getting the pikes didn't really matter. He goes into Downer Magician and Main Phase Two. Why not? Because <laughs> not only does it have piercing, but it's at a pretty nice twenty five hundred attack, if I'm not mistaken. So he's got two big ass beaters on board. Both of them have piercing. He still has an adequate amount of cards in hand, you know, having three. Um, I'm going to have to say advantage Catmaster. Um, him having way more life points obviously helps too. And he has a bunch of frogs locked and loaded uh, for for Rodent Totem. You know what I mean? If he needs to stall, like if Gaia Dragon dies, his death, his death frog is going to hit the graveyard and he can just summon Rodent Totem back. You know what I mean? And then he has another Rodent Totem sitting right here, just kind of chilling. So Card Goodman is looking at his graveyard. We know that he has Genix Undyne, which will probably... He'll probably commit his normal summon for Genix Undyne. Okay, and that's what he does. Now, I think that he plays two heavy infantries. Or he could drop Tidal into the graveyard. Tidal can attack over... Um, okay, so, so that's what he does. Tidal can attack over Downer Magician, because only 2,500. Although he'd still have to worry about Gaia. You know, actually, he can't leave... He can't leave this on board. He can't leave Genix Undyne on board, because if it gets attacked by Gaia, he'll lose. Unless he has Tidal Crash. Because then he would only take... No, wait, that would be 1300 too. He can't leave this on board. <laughs> During the end phase, this cannot be here. Otherwise, he cannot survive an attack from either one of these fuckers. That is the important part. That might be even more important than, um, than the title or anything else. He needs to get rid of this fucking Undyne. Because all Catmaster has to do is just make one big C and just run into this guy. And clearly, if he took the damage from last turn, he doesn't have a way of stopping him uh, summoning, you know, like Xyz or Synchros or whatever. This deck doesn't Synchro to my knowledge, but Xyz. <coughs> now, I'd imagine he's going to summon that title right about now, or sometime soon. Because title can take down one of these guys, even if it has to die in the process. And this may be one of those duels that came down to uh, one player just doing a ton of damage in a couple of battle phases, and the other player may have card advantage, but, you know, card advantage sometimes doesn't mean anything if your opponent's like, I don't care about card advantage, I'm just going to try and do as much damage as possible, and, you know, stuff that slips through the cracks is my victory. 
So what is Carl Goodman going to do? And Mermil, I mean, this is seeing just a huge resurgence. I think so much of it has to do with European nationals and the deck winning Euros. Uh, I, I've seen Mermil basically for like a month and a half period was just non-existent on Dueling Network. And now it's just come back with a vengeance. He's thinking, which tends to slow games down a lot. I wonder what this card is. I think if it was a if it was a bit sphere, he would have already activated it. Um, it could be mystical space typhoon. All right, so immediately after Teus is a special summon or the effect is activated, Catmaster is like, I'm going to immediately activate Maxi. And Kargumin's thinking. He's thinking about chaining the Max. Now the only cards he could, he could actually chain. To my knowledge, would be like debunk. Um, debunk would be one. Abyss Spear would be another. And like, I mean, uh, the last one is like Abyss Squall, but I don't think he has three Mermels in his graveyard to actually use Abyss Squall with. I mean, Mermels don't play Call of the Haunted, so that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Maxi definitely gonna put in some work here, uh, especially if he has if he has shiny Black Sea too. You know what I mean? Because if he has like shiny Black Sea, then like that Teus has to sit in attack mode, <laughs> and it's like, come at me, bro! What the fuck you gonna do? <laughs> oh snap! I mean, Teus in attack mode, no good. I don't understand why anybody would ever summon Teus in attack mode unless your opponent has like a fucking empty field or I don't know, like a damn Rainbow Karibo on board or something like that. Like, outside of that, I'm always having Teus in, a, in defense mode. Just in case, like, shit like that happens. You know what I mean? Now, since Maxi is technically chained on the activation of Teus, I guess Teus isn't actually on the field yet. So he can't actually still put it in defense mode. It's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't like seeing a Teus in attack mode. Bad things happen when Teus is in attack mode. I mean, if you're going to exceed, I guess it doesn't technically matter, especially if your opponent has a completely clear back row. Okay, so he does chain Abyss Spear. Alright, so he's going to use Abyss Spear first. I'd probably bring out Lead then, right? If he has it. Okay, so he brings out Teus in defense mode. Alright, so he gets his draw from the first Teus. Yes, okay, I got it. And he goes for Gundy. Alright, so basically, Catmaster is going in. <laughs> he says, alright, I'm going ham right now. He goes for... Fuck it, I'd just say go for Big Eye, man. If you're, if you're going to try and go for game, like, go big or go home. Oh my goodness, I just realized go big or go home, Big Eye. <laughs> alright, so he does Big Eye the guy of Dragon. Catmaster says, okay, now you have to remember Catmaster plays Gores. He's not going to summon title. He's not going to do any of that jazz. He's just going to attack with uh, with Gaia, and he's going to attack with Undyne. I am shocked that he left Undyne on board. I mean, he might as well attack with it now. I, I am shocked that he left Undyne on board. I really am. Okay, so he doesn't attack with it. I guess he doesn't want him to potentially be able to drop Gores. Standby phase, main phase. Okay, so if you're Cat Master, after getting um, two cards from Maxi and your draw phase, I'm sorry, but you have to, you have to, you have to close this game. If you don't close this game, you don't. If you can't close this game in this turn, you don't deserve to win. Uh, that that's just my stand on it. This deck, I've seen it do glorious combos. I've seen it do some really impressive shit. You know what I mean? It does suck that your opponent basically took your materials. Um, you know, so they have your Death Frog, and that's one less Rodent Totem that you can use. But you gotta find a way to get the fucking job done. Alright, so he's probably gonna summon Swap Frog. He gets rid of Sea Lancer. Sea Lancer ain't doing shit right now. He's gonna activate the effect. And I think he's just gonna load up his graveyard. Now, if he has another Death Frog in hand, clearly it's a fucking wrap. Because <laughs> I think that this deck plays two Gaia Dragons and two Volcasauruses. He's dropping Duke Frog in the graveyard. And he's going to use his normal on Swap Frog too. And he drops another Duke Frog in there. And 
friends. Oh, you know what? I just realized. As long as he has a Dez Frog in hand, I mean a Dez Frog in his graveyard, he can win. Because all he has to do is make Herald of the um oh, okay, so he's gonna banish one of the Rodent Odins. Um I think this is a mistake. If he has a Death Frog in his graveyard, he'll win. Because all he has to do is make Herald of the Um Which one is it? Is it not Herald of You guys know the fucking the fucking uh XC, it's rank two, it brings a, a monster back to your hand by discard Yep, there it is. Herald of the Pure Light, that guy. Yep, that's what he's gonna I yeah, I've seen Magic use that shit a couple of times. You just you get back your um you get back your fucking Death Frog and then you um you get rid of some random shit in your hand that you don't care about, and then you use your extra normal summon on your dash frog. Uh, actually, <laughs> Card Goodman fucked up. Card Goodman should have DD crowed that. <laughs> as soon as he did that, as soon as he DD crowed the second Rodin Dota, and I was like, dog, you fucked up. He's going to bring out Herald. And now he gets to activate its effect. And unless you have a fat bailer, you lose. Of course he has a fucking third. You always play three. <laughs> Sometimes they'll side out one, but no, you. It, yeah, so now all he has to do is make Volcasaurus then Gaia and he wins. And you use Volcasaurus and Gaia just like you wanna win twice, you know what I mean? Like you you Volcasaurus blow this motherfucker up, that's game. And then if not, then you make Gaia Dragon and then you attack over that, and that's game twice. So thank you guys for watching as always.